With Deep Rock Galactic's recent exit from Early Access, and the surge of Greenbeards entering the Caves of Hoxies for their very first time, there's never been a greater need for more robust training material. While management has already supplied us with a miner's manual full of info you should definitely check out, there's so much more you can learn from being out in the field. This video is a collection of 150 tips and facts that will not only help out miners that are new to Hoxies 4, but potentially teach veterans a few things they might not have known already as well. We won't be covering any of the nitty gritty details of builds here. These tips are meant to be useful to any miner no matter how much progress they've made so far. If you hear anything here that sounds too basic or obvious, keep in mind that some of these tips are things that myself and friends didn't realize for quite a while, so it can't hurt to reiterate just in case. We'll be getting into a little bit of everything here, including early progression, biomes, creatures, class basics, and even some etiquette in this guide. Welcome to Hoxie's 4 Miners. Let's get started. Try to know your hazard level. Stick with what feels challenging but not too hard. Hazard 4 and 5 are going to be really difficult until you get more perks and upgrades. You should definitely try out every class. See which ones feel better for you, which one you like the playstyle of, and pick that one for your first promotion. This will help you reach that endgame content like machine events and deep dives a lot sooner. Don't worry too much about the upgrades you choose at first for your weapons and gear. Pick what you think you like and focus on getting your weapons kitted out first. There are very few upgrades that are categorically better and as few that are too situational to choose. Upgrades are upgrades and you'll get closer to finishing your loadouts regardless of what you pick. Remember to get your perk points whenever possible. Perks determine a lot of your power alongside your weapon upgrades, so don't neglect them. Good all-round perks include Thorns, Vampire, Veteran Depositor, Beastmaster, Dash, Field Medic, and Iron Will. Don't pass up Mineral Mania, Golden Bugs, or Gold Rush Mission Anomalies. Resources are very scarce early game, and the boost you get from these mission types is worth it even if they aren't part of your current assignment. If you see weird machines embedded in the ground during a mission, don't worry about them if you have no promoted dwarves. After your first promotion, you get a key that lets you unlock and start machine events during missions. This doesn't mean you can't participate in them, you just won't get an overclock when you finish a machine event. And you'll need someone with a key in order to play them. They're actually worth quite a bit of XP, so go ahead if somebody starts one for you. Later on, this will be the primary way for you to acquire weapon overclocks. There is an option to force late joiners to not be able to choose duplicate classes in the menu. If you'd prefer to have a balanced team as a host, go ahead and check it. Try to go easy on the cosmetics early on. It's really up to you, but they're expensive and they can set you back a ton if you buy too many. Unless, of course, it's a beard. Those are mission critical. Builds are important, but don't worry about whether you're playing what is quote-unquote meta right now. The best stuff to have equipped changes with every mission type, anomaly, and biome you encounter. What's far more important is finding what feels fun to play and has the most effect with your personal playstyle. As long as you can kill bugs and move dirt, you're good to go. Don't neglect upgrading your mobility tools and other utility devices. They might not be as exciting as a shiny new damage mod on your favorite weapon, but utility upgrades are just as crucial to your success as any weapon perk. Be nice. It might not be a hot gameplay tip, but being affable to your fellow miners goes a long way for your individual session and the community as a whole. It's a cooperative game, so learning to get along with your teammates is as vital a skill as marksmanship or planning ahead. Don't forget to join the Miners Union and select a chapter. The terminal can be found just to the left of the pickaxe station. The Union chapters get rewards for completing tasks every week, and you don't want to miss out on the resources. Play with friends. This is usually true about any multiplayer game, but it stands true in Deep Rock Galactic, perhaps even more so. Especially for early game, having friends around can be a huge help in either learning the game together or having a higher level friend to help you through. Learning without the pressure of expectations is really helpful. And if you don't have any friends... <coughs> um... Use voice chat and text chat often to help your fellow miners. This can be to call out dangers, ask for help, or even make sure everyone's on the same page before you start something. Communication is paramount in this game, especially on the higher difficulties. Utilize your laser pointer. It's the best way to direct teammates and avoid confusion, especially if you're not going to use the mic. It even shows you teammates, supply drops, and molly through walls. And depending on what you click on, there's a myriad of voice lines your dwarves will say. 
These help make it extra clear what you're trying to draw attention to. The little screen also denotes what you're currently pointing at, so you can use it to find things that are hard to see or far away. Plus, you can do this. Try not to call Molly away from your teammates too often if you're split up, or at least ask if you can. It can get pretty annoying when she's walking long distances from dwarf to dwarf while everyone needs to deposit in different places. The terrain scanner is your best friend. Use it to orient yourself and find your way around the current area. It'll keep track of where you've been and show you the whole cave if you've already been through it. Also, pressing spacebar while in the scanner turns your dwarf in the direction your view is pointing. You can also scroll in and out with this menu to get a better look at the cave system. Always be on the lookout for Nitra. The red triangular crystal is your lifeblood on missions, and two or three points of it can be the difference between life and death. It's better to have too much at the end of a mission than be starving for ammunition as a swarm bears down on you. Use your pickaxe. It's not just for mining. Your pickaxe and the power attack you get from pressing both mouse buttons are the best way to conserve ammunition when you aren't in a huge amount of trouble. Try to internalize how much damage you're doing to glyphids and try to pick them off with melee attacks as often as you can, especially if you have the vampire perk equipped. Your ammo reserves will thank you later. You can place a permanent waypoint by pressing E while using the laser pointer. This can be really helpful for finding a point of interest you want to come back to later. Cover your teammates. Glyphids like to surround and overwhelm their prey, so keep a lookout for your teammates and keep bugs off their backs. Just try not to be an asswipe and avoid shooting your buddies. Don't forget to use your shout to call out to your teammates. You don't just make noise when you do this, it appears on your teammates' screens and shows them where you are even if they aren't using the laser pointer. This is especially useful in a storm or when you're caught by a grabber or a cave leech. Conserve ammo. Not just with your melee attacks, but make sure you use ammo only when necessary and save it for big swarms or bugs. This means either getting better at shooting so your accuracy doesn't waste a bunch of ammo, or equipping a bunch of ammo perks to make sure that you have plenty in reserve. You'll be punching yourself in the nose if you waste it before you find more nitra. The ceiling of the drop pod is a cup holder. This is an important hidden feature that can save your life. Electrical damage slows enemies down. Use this to delay bugs and even the big guys. You can throw heavy objects further by holding down mouse one before you let go. This is really helpful when you're trying to toss it to a teammate across a chasm or something. You can land on your teammate's head to negate fall damage, or even bounce up to higher areas. Don't forget you have a compass at the top of the screen. Use it to orient yourself and make more accurate callouts. Make sure you grab those pink bulb looking plants. Barley bulbs are what you use to buy buff beers in the space rig, and they help a lot. Not to be confused with the other plants that you can collect for beer creation. Those are fun and all, but they don't do anything for you as far as effectiveness goes. Either way, collect them all. I mean, why wouldn't you want to hoard beer ingredients? Please be careful around exploding plants. Not just for your sake, but uh, you never know when a teammate might be around some. Those chain reactions can have far-reaching consequences. Don't forget your beer. Look up at the ceiling. Try looking up at the ceiling. Look up at the ceiling often. Be sure to check the ceiling. Look at the ceiling. Look up at the ceiling. Look up at the ceiling. Follow proper etiquette when grabbing ammo. Supply drops have one supply node for each miner on your team, if you have four people on your team. Make sure to check with your teammates if you want to grab two. Unless of course it's an emergency. Just remember, your fellow miners will be pissed if you double dip all the time. Please try and ask before you do things like pull eggs, piss off dreadnoughts, or call the escape pod. It's always good to make sure everyone is together and on the same page before you start big events like this. Not only is it helpful for everyone, but if a teammate is caught off guard or in a bad location as a swarm of glyphids reaches you, it just makes it that much harder for you all to survive. And your teammates might not be too happy about it. When playing solo, don't forget to use Bosco. If you use the laser pointer and ping things, he can be told to focus targets, mine minerals, light up specific areas, and even fire rockets when you right click. Also, don't forget to upgrade him in the space rig. He can be really useful once fully upgraded. He can even pick up heavy objects for you too. The escape pod will usually drop around 100 to 200 meters away from you at the end of every mission. If you're in a particularly long or difficult to navigate cavern, 
it helps a lot to kind of go halfway through the mission backwards until you're in the center, so it's easier to make it anywhere else you need to go. It's better to traverse the difficult parts of the cave with no time limit. Speaking of which, make sure you can get back the way you came. If you pass through a particularly difficult to navigate cavern, it pays to make things easier for yourself if you have to pass through it again later. That means using your mobility tools unless you're a dirty scout. This is especially true if you pass through a vertical passage or a massive chasm. It makes the escape phase a lot less stressful. At the end of the day, finishing a mission is way more important than getting every mineral or even finishing your secondary quest. If your team is running low on ammo and nitra, there's no shame in calling the drop pod early and getting the hell out of there before things get worse. Don't be afraid to be a sissy baby and run away from a swarm. This can give you precious few seconds to collect yourself and cause the swarm to follow you in a straight line rather than surrounding you. If you're the last one down, this is a much better strategy than jumping around in circles hoping that they don't get to you. Power attacks instantly break most things with a single swing. This makes it easy to kill things like plants, mine ore, and especially to break solid rock if you're trying to mine quickly. They can also remove armor from glyphids that have it. You can use Molly as a stepping stool to get to things just out of your reach. If you get lost and separated from your team, sometimes you can follow Molly right back to them. If she's near you, ask them to call her and then just follow her on the way there. It's always better to stick with your team. Even if you and your teammates disagree on where to go or how to go about a mission, splitting up is almost never advised. It's better for all four of you to go with a worse plan together than to follow two good plans separately. Remember, only leaf lovers abandon their team. Electrified crystals hurt, but are actually really useful when you funnel swarms into them. They are breakable, but don't try to pickaxe them since they hurt like hell. It's better to use explosives if you can help it. It really helps to have a driller in this biome sometimes. Some tunnels are completely blocked off with three hit stone and can slow you down immensely if you don't have the drills handy. Ceiling plants suck, but you can remove them with a single hit from your pickaxe. Just hit where they're attached to the substrate. If you think you're going to end up spending a lot of time in a certain tunnel, it helps to clear them out. The sticky goo that covers the floor sometimes slows you when you walk in it. It can ruin your day, but with some good positioning, you can use it to slow down bugs too. If you're anticipating a lot of it, it's a good idea to bring the unstoppable perk when you're in the fungus bogs. The poison spewing fungus on the ground can really hurt if you end up fighting in or around it. Never hurts to clear that out either if you have a second. Don't strike at the gas vents on the ground with your pickaxe. They explode, and they can kill you instantly. The maggots here actually leave behind a cloud of poison when you kill them. There's a variety of hostile plants in the dense biozone. They're generally not a big nuisance, and most can be killed with a power attack or some firepower. But keep in mind, they can also damage glyphids too. I've seen them completely kill a dreadnought on their own. With how many vertical areas there are here, scouts are a godsend to check the upper levels. Make sure you use the terrain scanner to find flat ground above you that might have minerals hiding. The spores on the ground actually shoot up and explode when you damage them, except for with melee. The terrain here is easy to break with a single hit. Don't bother with Rocky Mountain Stouts if it's the buff beer before the mission. Speaking of digging fast, you can escape danger like a great value driller. Don't underestimate your digging abilities if you get stuck in a tough situation. With how high the ceilings are here, make sure you're looking up a lot. Acid spitters tend to have really long range here for some reason. Activated uranium crystals are radioactive and can hurt you and glyphids alike. But unlike the electrified crystals in the crystalline caverns, you can break these with a couple hits if you need to. Elemental insulation is a really good perk to have here. Not only just for the environmental factors, but the Praetorians and Exploders both have radioactive damage here as well. It never hurts to have some resistance to that. Cave tentacles are your friends. Not to be confused with cave leeches, which are definitely not your friends. The ground here can have cracks in it that will open up into huge chasms. Watch your footing or you'll fall in. The patches of snow on the ground slow you down slightly when you walk on them, but can also break your fall if you land on them from a great height. The unstoppable perk is also advised here. It'll save you a lot of headache if you end up fighting on snow patches. Bring fire damage if you can. Praetorians and goo bombers are weak to fire in this biome. It can also melt snow and ice. Black ice is usually a pain in the ass since it keeps your momentum as you run across it, but it can be useful if you need to outrun a group of bugs. 
You can use the steam vents with patches of vegetation around them on the ground to warm yourself up if you're close to freezing. Watch for falling icicles. They drop with a single shot. The green plants on the walls turn into platforms when you shoot them, but they do not break your fall like engineer platforms do. There's going to be a lot of shellback younglings in the salt pits. Watch out for tight tunnels and high cliffs. One bump can send you flying, and if you get stuck in close quarters with them, they can reduce your HP very quickly. There's giant salt stalactites on the ceiling. They can hurt you, but more importantly, they don't break when they land, and they're really annoying. However, they do do massive damage to anything unlucky enough to be hit by one. The walls here are the same shade as the red of nitra deposits. Try to pay extra attention so you don't miss out on nitra because it's very easy to overlook here. Pack extra water. And be nice to your teammates. There's enough salt here as it is. Explosions cause magma to appear on every damaged surface. This means grenades and especially C4 need to be used sparingly so you don't have to play the floor as lava during an attack. God has abandoned you. Earthquakes happen frequently and cause fiery chasms to open up beneath you. Have your engineer patch up the holes in the floor if it's a room you need to stay in for long. The maggots here explode violently when shot. Use this to your advantage if they're near glyphids. Magma geysers explode when damaged too much. Careful not to get too close and if you need to get rid of one, use explosives. The unique ribbed shape of most of the rooms here means you'll need to look extra hard for ore deposits between the ridges. It's very easy to lose secondary objectives here. If you have elemental insulation unlocked, use it. There's so much fire damage here, it's not even funny. Bring heightened senses on a Mactera Plague mission. Grabbers spawn a lot more often and it'll help a lot. During regenerative bugs or lethal enemy hazards, Steve will get any of the buffs that the bugs already have. Use this to your advantage. You cannot kill the horror on haunted cavern missions. Run away. Fear effects can work on the horror too, but not all of them. A good strategy is to split up into two teams of two so that the horror has to switch between the two groups so it's not always on top of your whole team, but it's really up to you. Don't forget to breathe on O2 missions. It seems silly, but it's actually really easy to overlook during fights. Also remember that supply drops also come with oxygen canisters attached. You can use these to give yourself checkpoints, even if they're out of ammo. The Sweet Tooth perk helps a ton on shield disruption missions. There's more red sugar during these missions, naturally, and it'll help you share with your team since you'll be healing a lot more. Glyphic Grunts have armor that falls off when shot and reduces damage done to them by an amount. Shoot the heads and exposed underbellies for maximum damage. Glyphid Slashers deal more damage and will slow you down when they attack. Keep them away. Glyphic Guards make great targets for Beastmasters since they have more health and only do slightly less damage than Slashers. Praetorians will almost always try to spray you with acid when they get into range. Use this opportunity to sidestep them and get some hits in on the soft, juicy bits. Don't wait to kill Nanocide Breeders. They might not seem too threatening at first, but the swarms of babies can keep your shields down and overwhelm you easily if you leave them alone for too long. Watch for the pink jellyfish, not the blue ones. If you can freeze goo bombers or nanocyte breeders, do it. This saves a ton of ammo. If you shoot goo bombers glowing bits, it will stop them from spewing their payload all over the room when they die. Don't let oppressors catch you in close quarters. They can split you up and ruin you with their ranged stomp attack if your team is stuck with them. Make sure to shoot the pustules on the bulk detonator. They do a lot more damage than shooting its body. Focus the detonator first and above all else. These things can wipe your team fast if you don't stop them. Dreadnoughts, detonators, and oppressors can burrow towards your team if they can't find another way to get to you. Make sure to listen for the telltale booming sound they make as they dig and use the terrain scanner to see what direction they're coming from. Oddly enough, Dreadnought's armor isn't affected by the armor breaker perk on your weapons. It's simply an extra health bar that recharges. Just shoot it with anything you've got. Try to lure the Dreadnought into a room with plenty of space to fight, so you don't get stuck in a corner with it. This lets you have more room to dodge fireballs and kite it around so you can deal more damage. If you have a minute, clearing out the floor of obstacles will help a lot too. You can destroy the Spitballer's projectiles by shooting them. Freezing enemies like the Brood Nexus or the Detonator can skip the unfortunate outcomes of their deaths if you time it right. 
Shoot the brute nexus eyes to save ammo when trying to kill one. Glyphid wardens can't attack you directly, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't delete them on sight. They can call allies with a roar. Mactera are universally weak to fire. Also, freezing them solid just outright kills them, so either is a good option. If you see a Huli Hoarder crawling around, wait till everyone is ready before you start shooting. Try to stay as close as possible while killing it to prevent it from burrowing away. If you fail to damage it consistently, or let it get too far away, it'll disappear. Always try to kite a Crassus Detonator into a tight area to maximize the amount of gold you get from the explosion. It's a huge waste to let it explode out in the open. And trust me, you don't want to miss out on it. As Engineer, the first thing you should do when you enter a room is identify the minerals high up on the walls. It's your job to make those accessible for your team. Your scout will thank you. It's always good to have your sentry up and not need it, then be frantically trying to set it up during an attack. If you don't have it up already, a good rule of thumb is to at least plunk it down the second you hear Mission Control warn you about a swarm. There is a caveat to this though. If you're experiencing a lull in attacks, it might be better to not have your sentry up and just have it ready to go. I usually do this by having it one hit away from being completely built so that it's not wasting ammunition on random glyphids that you can easily take care of with your primary weapon. Once things get a little too difficult, one hit with your hammer and it's ready to go. Simply moving a sentry from an old location will keep the current ammo count and will require it to travel the full distance. Recalling it when you're done using it by holding R will fully load them on top of letting you place them down instantly. Remember to do this if you're leaving the area. You can help friendly engineers set up their sentry no matter what class you're playing. You can also reload another engineer's sentry if you're also playing engineer. Try to remember to reload it whenever you have time. It does you and your team no good to have a sentry sitting there flaccid. If you see an opportunity to make terrain easier to navigate with your platforms, go ahead and do it. Platforms connected into bridges are the fastest way to cross large gaps for your whole team. It's also good to patch up hazards with platforms whenever possible. Holes glyphids can pour out of, magma, black eyes, sticky goo, especially dwarf-sized death pits are all included in this. Once you unlock it, the perk that causes platforms to break your fall can be incredibly useful. You can quickly descend into a pit if you need to, or even save yourself mid-fall. Unlock the insect deterrent perk for platforms as soon as you can. This causes bugs to avoid walking on them if there is an alternate path with no platforms to you within a certain radius. This lets you loosely funnel swarms away from areas you'd prefer them not to crawl, such as down the wall directly behind you. Bugs, however, will ignore your platforms if you're standing directly on them. Basically, if the shortest way to you is only possible by walking on platforms, they'll just do it. If you have a Steve, he follows the pathfinding of the bugs, so you can use him to see where the bugs will walk in relation to your platforms sometimes. If you plan on holding out in an area, it's a good idea sometimes to make a small fortress out of platforms to cover your sides and back during a swarm. It's less secure than a bunker, but offers more protection than simply fighting out in the open. You'll have to be the judge if the time investment required is worth it. These canopies can be especially useful against Mactera or Spitters. Seal up the driller's escape tunnel when you're running away from a swarm. It doesn't keep them all out, but it can definitely help you if you don't plan on coming back that way. Stack platforms like pancakes to make cover for dreadnought fights or when up against spitballers. This is also a good strategy for when fighting a Betsy. Speaking of Betsy, listen closely if you hear a low droning sound during a mission. This wow sound is actually a Betsy nearby. When you hear it, prepare to encounter a Betsy soon. You don't want to run into one with your pants down. I know I've said this once already, but the terrain scanner is your best friend as a driller, like even more so. Use it to find the most optimal way through the map to your destination before you drill, and to check if your tunnel's headed in the right direction during a dig. It's your job to get everyone back to the drop pod sometimes. When you're strapped for time or the way back is too difficult to traverse normally, the driller's job is to tunnel towards the escape pod while his team follows behind. You can make it to the pod with a full tank of ammo in most cases, unless it's especially far away. Anytime you drill a tunnel for your team, it's useful to ping the entrance of it for your teammates so they can follow you wherever the bunker's entrance or escape tunnel may be. Try to use your drills more often. It's nice to save them for the final tunnel at the end of the mission, but don't forget you can use them at any point. A lot of people will forgo using them for most of the mission for fear that they'll need them for an emergency, but the amount of things you can do with them and the ways you can open up for your team are well worth using the fuel. 
If things get too hot for you to deal with and you need to pick up a teammate, sometimes it's easier to drill underneath the map and pick them up from below. It can be risky, and it's not foolproof, but it beats fighting 50 glyphids on low ammo. If you ever see an opportunity to connect two rooms and shorten the travel time between them, then go ahead and do it. This not only helps you and your team get around quicker, but it can actually help Molly get back to the escape pod faster at the end of the mission. Don't forget, your C4 is for more than just killing bugs. It clears out a sizable chunk of terrain and can be used to make quick and dirty bunker rooms at the end of a tunnel. It can also speed up the mining process a lot, especially with mineral deposits and tough to reach areas. Bunkers can be extremely useful for dealing with large swarms, especially when you're locked into place. If you plan on digging one or your team asks you to, there are two different types you should know about. One is built into the side of a wall horizontally, into a larger room that allows the whole team to fire down a narrow tunnel, and the other is a tunnel dug vertically downward to bury a map objective you need to protect deep underground. The first is quicker and more useful in a pinch. Just remember, long tunnels lead to bunkers, short tunnels lead to tombs. A good practice when building a bunker is to always give the glyphids a narrow path to crawl to you through. This makes it less likely for the game to spawn a detonator or oppressor to dig straight to you without you knowing ahead of time. It's also a good idea to give yourself an escape tunnel just in case things go south during the bunker. I'm not going to get into whether or not you should make bunkers, this is just so that you know how they are made and what they look like when done well. There's always been a bit of controversy about whether or not bunkers are useful, or they just increase the chances that you'll die as a team, but that's for another video. Using your drills to kill bugs with the vampire perk equipped gives you HP just like with melee attacks. This also applies to using throwing axes. You can retrieve throwing axes that are still glowing on the ground. If you have more than four in your inventory when you're picking up supply, throw the extra ones on the ground for later. If you have the perk unlocked for slowing down hordes with your sticky flames, try painting your flames in a zigzag pattern for maximum effectiveness. Sticky flames do not damage your teammates when they walk over them, but your direct flames do. Your weapons and tools are best suited for dealing with large swarms of low HP enemies, especially glyphid swarmers. If you see swarmer nests, try clearing them out with your flames by just painting the wall where they will come out of. As a scout, anytime you enter a big room, make sure to use your flare gun to light it up. This is especially true when you hear a swarm coming. Your team will really appreciate being able to see, and your lights make it a lot easier to get your bearings in a room and figure out where all the minerals and secondary objectives are. Make it a priority to check high up and hard to reach areas for your teammates. You can save your team some platforms, zip lines, and drill fuel by just grappling up to the ceiling to check if there's anything up there. Leave the floor level minerals to your teammates who don't have as much mobility. In the event that your engineer is absent or just not paying attention, you can make a foothold in the wall next to some ore with a power attack. Just grapple up and hit the wall next to it a couple times until you have a big enough hole to stand in. The Hover Brutes perk actually helps a lot with this because you can just hover at the level of the mineral and give yourself a foothold before you drop back down. Get used to abusing the speed of your grappling hook to get close up or behind enemies. You can be most efficient with your ammunition by chunking them with direct weak spot hits from behind. It's also sometimes a good idea to use your grappling hook to get away from the group and kite some enemies off of them. It'll give you and your teammates some breathing room by splitting the horde up a little bit. And since you're so fast, you can afford to do so. Make sure you don't get too far away from your team for too long. Just because you have the most mobility doesn't mean you're not in danger when you're off on your own. Cave leeches are always a threat, and your team won't like going 200 meters across the map to pick you up. You can still take fall damage. Make sure you can get back down safely whenever you go up high onto a wall with your grapple gun. If you do get stuck up, try to ask your engineer to give you a platform for someone to stand underneath you. Your weapons and mobility are well suited for focusing important targets. Make sure you reposition often to get rid of spitters and glyphid wardens that are in the back line. You don't deal with large groups of enemies very well, but you do hit really hard with weak point hits. Your cryo grenades can kill an entire swarm of Mactera instantly if you land them right. If you have them, always use them on huge swarms of Mactera. Always try to identify when a vertical area could use a zipline for easy traversal. This is especially important on point extraction missions where your team will need to travel back to the center point of the map while carrying heavy aquarks. Use your shields, they can save you in a ton of scenarios. 
They force Glyphids back and block most projectiles from hitting you and regenerate your shields near instantly. You can stand in fire or poison clouds with a shield on and not take any damage. You are the primary upfront damage dealer and all round bullet hose for your team. Focus on the brunt of the Glyphid Swarm and try to clear out large groups of enemies quickly. Make sure to pay extra attention to your ammo reserves on your primary weapon. Running out can spell doom for you since your secondary weapons don't deal with large groups of enemies very well. A nice way to deal with ground based swarms is to have a zip line horizontally over them. You can just ride it back and forth and as long as they can't shoot at you or fly up to you, you'll be fine. Zip lines placed at steep enough angles will let you travel quickly downward while holding W. Some glyphids stuck with sticky grenades will turn around and run away from you. You can use this on Praetorians to get shots in on the weak spot. Your minigun can proc stuns on most bugs. Make sure to spread your damage evenly across the swarm to slow their advance. Watch the heat meter on the minigun model. It's easy to miss and can be really helpful when trying to avoid overheats in the middle of battle. You can keep your minigun partially spun up when you're preparing for a fight by tapping mouse 1. Alright, so that about does it. I hope this information can help you navigate whatever hazard level you're on currently, or at least taught you one or two things you didn't know. Was there anything I missed? Any tips you think deserve to be part of this list? I might end up making a part 2 of this video if I can think of enough new tips to warrant it in the future, so comment anything you think I should add below. I'll be sure to credit you. Anyway, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. There's more Deep Rock Galactic and other content coming in the future, so I hope you stick around. I'm also streaming Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays as Seervend on Twitch.tv, generally about 9pm Central. It'd be great to see you there. Until next time, Rock and Stone. Uh, the error cube. Um, uh, if you find one, there's no reason to be alarmed. It's it's not a glitch. Don't report it to the subreddit as a glitch. Um, what they're actually used for is. Uh,